you are uh, involved in a very uh, interesting, <laughs> to say the least, legal case, Ed O'Bannon versus the NCAA. Mm -hmm. uh, there have already been a couple of decisions made by uh, the judge in this case. Uh, surprisingly, to me at least, was the decision not to certify as a class action suit on behalf of athletes who have expired their eligibility, which is the case with Ed O'Bannon suing the NCAA because he's not uh, getting compensated for his likeness in an EA Sports video game. What is the worst case scenario for the NCAA in this case? Well, I'm obviously not going to talk specifically about a law case that's underway right now, but the, I guess the fundamental issue at stake in, in this general debate about pay for play and compensation and all of that uh, is, is what's the core function of intercollegiate athletics? Why do these games exist? And, and, and who are these young men and women who are the athletes? And so still on his feet, touchdown Aggies. Miller flipping into the end zone for the touchdown. And there's Tommy picking up the running back nail and planning him. There's a lot of people who think that if a football team generates a lot of cash that the student athletes ought to share in that. Uh, in some way or another, that they ought to be paid employees. And, and I recognize that that's a perfectly legitimate argument that some make, someone might make. I just can't imagine why a university would want to do that. If you're going to hire someone to play football for you, why would you want them to be a student? And that doesn't make any sense to me. If they're, if, they're, if they're mission, if they're hired to be an employee of a university, to play football for entertainment, then having them be a student is a distraction that really would sort of get in the way of their being perhaps successful as a football player. Why, why say you, you, you've got to go to school? Why say we've got to get you back to class? Why say we're going to constrain the number of, of uh, the length of a season? Why, I mean, if you're going to make it professional sport, make it professional sport. But there's virtually no one in intercollegiate athletics who thinks that's where it ought to go. So the notion is, are these students, and if they're students, uh, then what are their expectations of them as students? And, and what are their expectations uh, in terms of the level of support that they can get from a university to be a student? That's a big part of the debate right now going on in the governance model. Uh, there's a lot of people who are arguing, and I agree with much of the argument, that student athletes need scholarships that provide greater support, that they need uh, better commitment and guarantees on their scholarships when they finish up with athletics, that they have uh, as, as great a support as can possibly be provided in all the health and welfare issues, that they be provided maybe even some benefits for their family to cover travel costs and a variety of other things like that, that there be a, a more um, uh, flexible model for relationship with agents, for example, uh, for those handful, tiny, tiny handful of students that go on to be professional athletes. That's really different than saying, well, let's split up half the media revenue and pay, the, pay that out to the student athletes. That's what the O'Bannon case is arguing. They're arguing that half of what CBS provides, the NCAA and the, and the, and the CBS Turner contract for basketball ought to be given to the players because they, they generate it and they ought to get it. Well, if that's what people want out of college athletics, then of course it's not collegiate athletics anymore, it's professional athletics. There may be people in, in higher education that want that, but I don't know of them. I understand what you're saying in terms of the field of competition, but I, I, I look at someone like Ed O'Bannon and he's thinking, I haven't played college basketball in many years since the early 1990s, mid-1990s, and someone's making money off of me in a UCLA uniform in a video game, I should get some of that money. That makes sense to me. Yeah, and in fact, there's nothing in NCAA rules that prohibits that. I mean, one of the reasons that that argument hasn't been successful with the court is that Ed O'Bannon as a, as a, uh, no longer, is no longer obviously a player at UCLA, and if he wants to uh, market his image and his likeness as a UCLA player today, he can do that. But you can market his image and his likeness as a UCLA player, and no, you can make actually, money actually with can't. EA Sports, no? No, actually we can't. Um, our rules allow us to use images and likenesses. The NCAA, the association, not a school, this the association, the only thing the association can do is use images and likenesses for marketing our championships. So a poster or a video or an ad for the Final Four. We can, we can use the video that we work with you and others to produce for that purpose. 
But the, one of the other fundamental issues that's been missed here is that the contract with EA Sports, uh, which we're not, we've already announced we're not renewing, the contract with EA Sports said expressly you can't use their likeness. You can use a jersey, you can use a, you can use a name, but you cannot use the likeness of any one individual. That's part of the debate right now because the debate right now is, has been that, well, with basketball, for example, the likenesses aren't good enough to make the basketball game successful. Well, they dropped the basketball game because we said, no, you can't put people's faces on basketball players. That's, that's using their likeness. You can't do that. That's why the basketball game is Fine line about how you define likeness thing. Absolutely. Because you can use that is. jersey and that jersey number. Absolutely. You can that's use Adrian I, Peterson's Oklahoma. <laughs> Yep. number in a, in a football game and well it's not I, his likeness I, but but to the, to the person playing the game it sure looks a lot like him yeah I completely agree with that and and it's one of those that's one of the reasons that because of that uh, ambiguity and debate there that we have said in the NCA we are not going to participate in those video games uh, and by the way it's important to know that the NCA the entity the NCA the only thing that we have the ability to license is the name NCA and the logo so when you when you see a video game that has a particular university and their colors and their band and all of that, the university has licensed that or their conference has licensed that. So individual schools have been engaged in those relationships and many of them are now saying, you know, this doesn't look right or feel like right, so we're going to back away. And that's part of a debate and discussion that's ongoing.